with that said let's go into the word of God Genesis chapter 9 verse 12 and down and God said this is the sign of the covenant which I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for perpetual for continuous generations I will set a rainbow somebody say rainbow in the cloud and it shall be for the sign of the covenant between me and the earth it shall be when I bring a cloud over the earth and the rainbow shall be seen in the cloud I will remember my covenant which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh the waters shall never again somebody say never again, never again. become a flood to destroy all flesh a rainbow shall be in the cloud and I will look on it to remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. Somebody say never again. Never again. Today's message is going to be titled Rainbow Promise. Rainbow Promise. Look to your neighbor and say it's about the rainbow. Today you're going to get a new definition of the rainbow. I know the rainbow has been used to represent you know a movement uh, but today I'm going to talk about where it started and a different kind of movement that God has to represent a rainbow. Amen. We see that with Noah God gives rainbow as a sign of a covenant. To Abraham God gives circumcision as the sign of the covenant. To Israel God gives Sabbath as the sign of the covenant and to us as Christians Jesus gives baptism as the sign of the covenant so that's why as Christians we believe in getting baptized and the young man saying getting rebaptized. Uh, sometimes that's good too but the point is that it's a sign of our covenant with the Lord the message that I want to speak to you tonight I will summarize it in one statement the whole thing that I'm going to speak for next 15 to 18 minutes I'm going to summarize it in one statement and you can write this down. The flood of my past will not reappear in my future. And this is not a sermon. This is a prophetic word that can change your life. Prophetic meaning that God can take this word as a promise for your life and can shift things first in your mind and as a result in your future. The flood of my past will not reappear in my future. Never again. When Noah went through the flood, the rain came, the clouds came, the tornado came, the, the lightning came, all of these things came and then the rain, the luge came and it, the waters raised up and Noah saw how it destroyed everything and everyone around him. He came out of the the ark, sets the, sets the, uh, uh, the, uh, the altar before God, God smells the aroma and the clouds gather again. Imagine someone who's just been through the flood, sees the clouds, sees the rain begins to drip and in the midst of that God begins to speak to Noah and says, Noah, I don't want you to be afraid. The rain, the clouds is not another flood. And in the middle of that, God gives him a rainbow. And he says, from now on, what you've been through, what you survived will not ever happen to you. The clouds will come, the rain will come but there will be no flood. Sometimes we go through things in life, we go through bankruptcy, we go through a heartbreak, sometimes we go through things where we get rejected, dumped, abandoned or God forbid abused. We go through things where we get mocked, laughed or left behind. We go through things where we try to pass that class so many times and we cannot pass it we lose our financial aid or we lose our funding we lose our schooling and we have to start everything from the beginning again 
and then finally we get back on our feet and we attempt to make something that we tried before and the clouds gather up and the mind begins to play games our mind begins to say the way you failed then you'll fail now the mind begins to tell you and the devil begins to lie to you and say the flood is coming again that flood almost killed you that flood destroys you and it took you years to recover and another one is coming get ready but the message I have for you tonight is to tell you when you've been through the flood and you have a relationship with God and it begins to rain God has a rainbow for you and he wants to remind you that it will not happen again like it happened last time that what will happen in the future will not be a repetition of your past because of the rainbow because of the covenant you have with God because of the covenant God has with you because of his presence and because of his peace somebody say amen, amen. never again somebody say never again never again, never again. Never. say louder never, never again you know it happened with Israel when they were in Egypt and they were in bondage for so long and finally God delivered them through the blood of the Lamb. They got out and the Bible says they walked boldly. But not long after Pharaoh, he gathered 600 chariots and went after Israel. And when they saw Pharaoh, big people begin to complain and people begin to cry and people begin to say, God, here it comes again. Here it comes again. Slavery is coming again. We thought we were free. We thought this problem was over. We thought you delivered us. Have you ever been in a place where you got delivered? And then the Pharaoh came back. Have you ever got in a place where you got healed? You were certain you got healed and the next morning the symptoms came back. That's the word that I have for you today. Never again. And when they saw Pharaoh, God gave them a promise. God gave them a rainbow and this is what God said. For the Egyptians whom you see today, you shall see again no more forever. God hasn't drowned Pharaoh yet. Egyptians were not defeated yet. They were just approaching but God already gave them a rainbow and this was the promise. God says look at them one more time because this is going to be the last time you see their face and no more ever again. You have to receive that word tonight. If you've been through a breakup and you're embarking on a new relationship and maybe a relationship starts getting a little bit rocky and the devil will say, ha, huh, you will always be single. You will always have broken relationships. You have to look at that devil and say, I'm going to look at you one more time and this is going to be the last time I will look at that disappointment never again. If you tried a business, if you tried something to do with business or work and every time you tried you failed. And today you are trying something again. You're beginning something new this year. And after a few weeks you begin to see Pharaoh with his chariots. And the devil lies to you and says another flood is coming. You will fail again. But the word of the Lord says to you today, you have to look at your Pharaoh. And say this is going to be the last time I'm going to see you around. Never again. Because the rainbow, the promise of God says, the flood that was there yesterday will not reappear tomorrow. Yes, it will rain, but it won't flood. Because of God that is on your side. Can somebody say amen? Maybe same thing happened with your schooling. No one in your family was able to finish schooling. They started, but no one was ever able to finish. You're beginning to go to college and you're facing challenges. Today, I have the word for you today. You can overcome that. And the flood that took the education from your family will not be the flood that will take education from you. you I want to paint a rainbow in your mind that when you see the challenges in your school that you will be strengthened not to let the flood come again but to see the rainbow and says this is not going to claim my life like it did the generations before. Can somebody say amen? amen. Never again. Never again. You know when I was 16 I thought I was ready for marriage. I was sure I was ready for marriage and there was this particular girl that was coming to our church she started start, just started to come to our church and she had a lot of spiritual problems and I felt messiah complex kicked in and uh, I right away decided that God called me to fix all of her problems you know I, I was I was young and I didn't know that relationships are not rehabs 
but at that time you know it was the same thing a relationship was a rehab at the time and so remember I was emotionally being attached and I, I was very certain I was ready for marriage I thought, I thought spiritually I was ready but uh, through the grace of God uh, nothing of that through the help of my pastor and my parents they quickly slapped that idea out of my head and and I snapped out I graduated from high school at the age of I think 20 I had my first serious uh, serious relationship where I was convinced that it will um, end up in uh, in marriage somewhere along the line my head got confused I became so emotionally and, and mentally confused where um, that relationship ended about six or five months later I was in the same relationship with the same person and again I got to the same place where I was something not was there was not there probably I wasn't mature or whatever it was and so in my head I was just getting confused everything was fine for a few months and then just get completely confused wet feet whatever they call it and I just dropped it and I felt so disappointed with myself that and felt guilty for that as well I took a few years off and I decided you know what no relationship for me I gotta get this guy cleaned up because I'm a mess and about six years ago in January around January time I meet Lana when I met Lana the first time we went on a IHOP for breakfast everything went really good after that I get home and the same thing kicks in again exactly same confusion just boom it comes in my mind and I actually phoned her and I said you know it's it's over I we're just friends you know we all love that we're just gonna be friends brothers in Jesus and sisters in Christ and she completely understood what that meant and I remember we went to fast and we went to pray for about 21 days. It didn't last 21 days. I think it was last around about 17 days. And during that time I started to see God's face and I started to seek truly the Lord's face. And one of the things that God started to do at that time is I gave a sacrifice, financial sacrifice from money, is that God beginning to change in my mind the pattern of defeat. The pattern where it will always be like this you are a confused man that's just who you are get used to it you've broken other people's lives and so you deserve to have that you're gonna live like this all the time and something happened in that January where in the midst of the clouds which I've seen those clouds before and they've ended up in the flood but this time in the midst of the cloud I saw a rainbow and the rainbow it wasn't my wife it was the clarity in my mind it was the peace in my heart that I didn't have before the clouds were still there the confusion the emotional thing was still there but the rainbow came in and I said to myself this time it won't be like the last time I don't have all my life to live in disappointment this time it's not gonna be like the last time and you know what within about three months we were engaged and four months later we were married looking back it's one of the best decisions that I made at the time in my life but it was it looked like a flood but when you see a rainbow even if it rains you can move forward and not have a flood can somebody say amen, amen. I want you to write down point number one is the rainbow is not for perfect people but for forgiven people you know verse uh, 21 chapter 8 of Genesis God said to Noah he said the Lord smelled a soothing aroma and the Lord said in his heart I will never again curse the ground for man's sake although the imagination of his heart is evil from his youth nor will I again destroy every living thing as I have done did you know why God gave a rainbow to Noah it wasn't because Noah was perfect it wasn't because finally God cleansed all the bad people out of the earth and left the most amazing perfect people. When God gave the rainbow to Noah, the Bible says he did it knowing in Noah's heart is already junk. Knowing in his kids, his kids are crazy. He knew Noah's gonna get drunk and he says knowing that evil is in their hearts God still gives the rainbow I don't want you to feel like that because of what you've been through because you suffered that now God's gonna give you a blessing as an award for your suffering God gives blessing as a expression of his love never as an award for my suffering as a word for Jesus' suffering not my suffering God wants to bless you maritally not because every decision you made was perfect. 
God wants to bless you financially not because everything in your past was spotless. God gave the rainbow knowing people's hearts were still not all there but he says my mercy is going to be greater than my judgment. Can somebody say amen? You know the flood did not cleanse evil. It removed evil people but only the blood removes evil out of the people. The flood removed bad people out of the earth but the blood of Jesus Christ removes evil out of people's hearts. Only the blood of Jesus can cleanse your life. Only the cross of Jesus can remove the bad that you have in your heart. Can somebody say amen? You know it's very interesting because the rainbow is actually a bow directed upward without a string or arrow. In the Bible a rainbow, a, a bow was always a symbol of God shooting at the earth but after the flood God changed the aim of the bow. It was no longer aimed at the earth and that bow had no string and had no arrows. That means to you and me it's a very simple lesson. The wrath of God is no longer going to be shot at you because it was shot at Jesus Christ and God flips the bow around and makes a rainbow a constant reminder your sins was already paid for you don't have to pay for them you don't have to guilt trip yourself you will make it better or you will make it go away God's grace and mercy is sufficient and it's enough somebody say amen God's grace and mercy is sufficient point number two a rainbow does not stop the rain it cancels the flood a rainbow does not stop the rain it cancels the flood when the clouds begin to gather and they begin to get doomy and gloomy that's when the rainbow comes rainbows don't come during the sunshine a rainbow comes when the clouds when the when there's a little bit of drips of rain and then you see the rainbow as a reminder listen you may still have the rain you might still have the troubles but you won't have the flood those troubles won't take you out those troubles won't end up like they ended before God will see you through can somebody say amen the way it happened first time will not be the way it will happen this time God will see you through when we experienced a little breakthrough in our church about some eight years ago and it was in January uh, one person got saved we had about two rows of our youth that was coming here when that one person got saved people start coming every single week a little bit more and a little bit more and that momentum lasted for about a year and a half to two years the most it was reached was about half or almost all of this side of the sanctuary was filled with people it was such a wonderful experience and then something out of nowhere because of our mistakes lack of experience uh, people start moving out of town and slowly vision was lost and people were being also lost one by one they were moving out of church cities people were leaving the church and everything went down to the same place where it used to be and then it took us a while to recover from that and to get back into the same passion and vision that we see that now for the past two and a half years and when God started to do a new thing in our ministry about two and a half, three years ago, when people start coming get, getting saved again, one of the things that I had to and even our team had to battle with is this, it won't last. This will be like the last time. People will give their lives to Jesus. This will last for six, seven months and after that everything will come down to normal and it will stop. People will no longer give their lives to Jesus. Home groups will no longer be raised up. Miracles will no longer happen and one of the things in those seasons I had to battle with and our key leaders had to constantly battle with is when the clouds begin to gather in your mind and the devil begins to lie to you and says yes you've enjoyed this good time but listen don't get too happy because the flood is coming again. The thing that happened to you before will happen to you now but one thing we constantly told ourselves and I want you to tell yourself as well is that God is faithful to see us through if he brought us to this he'll bring us through it he's not gonna drown us and this flood is not gonna happen again <laughs> salvations will not stop happening home groups will not stop being opened 
Our church is not gonna stop growing. Our church is not gonna just simply go back to what it used to be and we made a decision to ourselves. Listen, any kind of cloud that begins to gather, God will give us a rainbow. A reminder that His grace will go from glory to glory, from faith to faith. In the last days, says the Lord, I'll pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. God says in the last days, when darkness get darker, my light will get brighter. It will not happen again like it happened before. Can somebody say amen? I want you to carry that in your heart. You know today we see more home groups. Today we see more people giving their life to the Lord. You know before when you pray for people and there were some heavy cases of demon possessed or people who had demons and it was for two three months and then next thing that would happen is that those people walk away from the church. There was few of those cases that a long time ago we would pray for. When last year we had about four of those cases. We prayed for almost every other service and the devil would lie and say you know what like it happened then it will happen now these people won't be delivered they will leave the church and they will always be defeated but one thing that we constantly did in our mind when we prayed for these people is just because it happened to that young man eight years ago that we were not able to help him it will not happen like that now these people will be set free we are in a different season these clouds don't mean flood they just mean rain and they mean rainbow God's reminder of God's faithfulness and God's goodness in our life and to God's glory you know all of those four people all those three people that are sitting today they were completely delivered and today their life are improving, their life is getting better and their life is changing because of the glory of God in Jesus name. Can somebody say amen? amen. Failure is an event. It's not you. The devil will lie to you and says you are a failure. He will say Fail, failure will happen again to you but remind the devil and say failure is what happened. It's not who I am. I am more than a conqueror through Jesus Christ. Every time I go through something that reminds me, smells like, looks like, feels like what I've been through before. I remind myself God has a rainbow in the midst of the cloud for me. In Jesus name. Amen. You know about five years ago when we just got married I was invited to speak. At, at that time it was the largest place that I spoke into had the most people. It was a youth gathering. It was a bunch of youth, pe youth people there in Seattle and I think it was about 600 people. Five years ago that was the largest auditorium or the largest crowd that I've spoken to and it was winter. We drove there. I was prepared to speak and I had I started having problems mentally where I would start having so confu con such a confusing thoughts about what to speak and I changed my message standing there. Our pastor was there and he came be before worship and kind of said make sure you know you you bring the fire down you know make sure you keep this and this and I'm already confused and that just kind of made it a little bit more confusing and more stressful and I got up there to speak and I just feel as cold as ice as dry as wilderness. Nothing comes out. I begin to stumble my words. I forget my notes everything and I just chicken out. I preached for 15 minutes and walked out. Never done the before and never done the after. And when I've done with that, you know, everybody looked at me and everybody knew something was wrong with him. What happened to him? Because this never happens to this guy. And pastor afterwards called me and he said, Vlad, you know, you flopped it. That was terrible. I was like, yeah, tell me about it. That wasn't terrible. That was a disaster. He says, you, you, you can't do like that. I'm like, I know pastor. I know something happened to me. He's like, whatever happened to you, you got to get it out of your way. Because you can't be going to places and doing this. And I felt so guilty and felt such a shame. And after that, I was spoken to good places but never really anything that size until last year. I was invited to a conference to do a small session on Saturday. And the main speaker who is known all around the world to do mighty healings is supposed to speak on Saturday night. Turns out the main speaker who was doing all the healings got sick. So he wasn't making. I am on my way to this conference and the pastor from that conference calls me. He said, hey, you're going to be the main speaker. And just no pressure, but you do the healing too. And I was like, super great. Anything else? Just, you know, maybe make me an angel there. Flop with my wings. He says, no, no, no pressure. Just, just do your job. And so I was like, oh, for sure. I'm so excited. And I'm standing there in the service. I had my message prepared about faith. But I'm like, this is not powerful enough for the main evening. So every service I switched my messages. Somebody got up talked about offering. I'm like, I'll talk about money. Somebody gets up and talks about this. I switched my message. I switched my message 20 times in my mind until the night came in and I asked them, can I have a room? I, I want to go and pray. I didn't go and pray. I went and slept because my mind was so clouded and so much pressure. When I woke up from that sleep, literally clouds start coming in together and that thing start coming in. Vlad, you flopped it five years ago. You're going to flop it again. 
but right in the middle of that I cried out to the Holy Spirit and I said Holy Spirit I'm gonna flop it if you don't give me a rainbow just a small little token of your peace and that you are with me that's all I need and the Lord just gave me a small little piece in my heart and said speak the same message you were supposed to speak come in there don't make any apologies just do your thing and that's it and that night was one of the greatest nights of my life so many people got healed so many people got touched and ever since then when it comes to speaking things shifted even when I get up to speak and I feel like you know I'm losing it all this stuff I remind myself in the middle of that message toward the end of that message after the altar call or during the altar call God will show his rainbow and the way I flopped it before I won't flop it again I won't flop it again and same thing applies to you today same thing applies to you today God has a plan and a purpose for your life and God wants to remind you today the way things ended for you before they won't happen to you again like that I want you to receive that today maybe you got broken maybe you got somewhere where you got devastated maybe some things fell apart today is the day where God wants to do a new thing in your life in Jesus mighty name can somebody say amen when clouds gather look for the rainbow don't rehearse the flood do not remember what happened before maybe today you're looking at your life and you say you know what same thing will happen that happened before not true Jesus came first time they crucified him he's coming again and Jesus doesn't have thoughts that oh I'm so afraid to come on the earth same thing will happen to me that happened to me first time when Jesus looks of the earth he cannot wait to get back here because he knows when he's coming back here they won't crucify him he will rule and reign he had experience on this earth that was bad but he is coming again and it will be a completely different experience I want you to change your mind today if you are embarking this year and saying you know what I'm gonna commit my life to praying ah, you've tried that last year how long did that last the devil will say let God give you a rainbow what happened last year stayed at last year it's a new year and it's gonna be new opportunities maybe you just got your job and the last job you got fired because you were late things things happened and at this job maybe situation is getting friction between your boss and maybe you want to fight leave right now and you say you know what it's over because I'm just gonna go look for something else listen do not give up that soon when clouds gather last year was the flood this year is gonna be a rainbow maybe you got sick and right now the symptoms are coming back and you were treated or you received healing and you feel the symptoms coming back and the devil tells you you've never been healed I want to tell you something just because the symptoms come back it doesn't mean the flood is coming back you gotta tell yourself this is a rainbow God tells me God reminds me the Pharaoh you see today you will not see again in Jesus name maybe you're a guy and you started in a relationship or you're a young lady and you are of age and you are in a relationship and the things are going exactly the same way it always went for you at a certain point the person leaves you at a certain point feelings leave you and maybe you are in that point now I want to tell you something today this is gonna be a different year and this year God doesn't promise floods he promises rainbows he promises that he will see you through and whatever happened before will not happen again if you believe that in your mind you will see that in your life if you wait to see what will happen and you say hmm, I'm just gonna see what happens well you're letting life dictate your direction don't ever be at the mercy of your life God called you to reign in life not to be dominated by it God called you to be more than a conqueror not to be intimidated by it God called you to rise above God called you to to soar with wings like eagles not to be trampled in Jesus name rise above tell yourself this is going to be a different year your business will prosper your finances will prosper you will be in the best shape you will have a great prayer life this year yes you've quit smoking before how long did that last the devil will say listen look at the devil and listen listen devil I'm gonna see you for the last time this time it's gonna be different maybe you've received freedom from pornography and you went on without you know falling into that sin for months and then something happened and you fell and then you received freedom again and the devil comes this says oh we'll see how long that will last as long as you are allowing clouds to create a flood in your mind it will flood but if the clouds come you have to make 
ground yourself deep and you say whom the sun sets free is not free for a year it's free indeed and I am that whom the sun sets free I am that one whom the sun sets free I'm not going back to that addiction and that addiction will no longer hold my life the Pharaoh you see today you will see again no more forever for some of you that Pharaoh is alcohol for others of you that Pharaoh is drug abuse for others it's suicidal thoughts it's depression there are some of you that Pharaoh is the constant allergies or it's the high blood pressure for some of you that Pharaoh today is a constant disappointment in your job things that are always tense in your finances or maybe in your marriage whatever it is could you receive a word today let that word be your rainbow what happened before doesn't have to happen again this time it's gonna be different oh I don't promise that we know rain but God promises he wants to cancel the flood in your future the flood of your past will not reappear in your future you may say but I don't deserve it we all know that God knows that he didn't give you a rainbow because he was blind to your mistakes he didn't give you a rainbow because he knew you'll never make any mistakes he gave you a rainbow because he knows in spite of your weakness his grace will pull you through his grace will cover what you do not have and he will help you and raise you up and give you a bright future in Jesus name